Hi, I'm Michaela from the Makers Collective. I'm just going to show you really quickly how I create the graphics for my featured images for my blog posts in Photoshop. And I am sitting here with my kids in the living room with me, so you might hear me talking to them occasionally. <laughs> so here we go. I've got um, Adobe Photoshop open, and I'm actually just going to jump over to Pixabay, which is one of the many um, free image sites that you can go to to find your images. And I'm going to pop in the word desk. And I have it already looked on here. So I'm going to come down and get this one here. Downloaded. And looking at the sizes here, I want to get, um, I don't need it really massive. I don't need the 4,000 pixel one. Um, but the large size 1920 by 1275 is going to be good. So it'll be large enough for my... Um, graphic that I'm creating but also it'll be good for if I want to post to Instagram or post it like as part of the blog post it'll be nice and big for that sort of thing as well or you know in a background as part of the website as well if I wanted to Okay, so that one's downloaded now. It'll be in my downloads folder. So I'll just minimize that and jump over to Photoshop. Now I'm just going to go through step by step exactly what I do to create my images. And what I have actually done is then saved my Photoshop file to be a template. So I don't have to start from scratch each time. But these steps are going to be perfect for you if you want to create any sort of graphics in Photoshop. Um, and it's going to show you just how to set up your document how to, uh, what size and the pixels and um, all that kind of thing and placing an image text. So we'll go file, uh, new and I'm just going to write, uh, name this title graphic and the size, um, I do want it to be square and I'm going to put it at 1200 by 1200 and I'm going to leave it on RGB colour for now. If I was going to print this at any time I would want it to be CMYK but for now RGB is totally fine. I don't really need to worry about the other stuff and also resolution 72 is fine because we're doing it for screen. If you were um, wanting to do something for print, again you would choose you know, the paper size that you want and you'll notice here that resolution goes up to 300 and that means that that will be suitable for printing. But I know this image is totally just destined to be for web and web only so um, the 72 will be completely fine for that. Now it's important here to make sure, um, because I went to the custom menu there, my width is 1200 but it's actually in millimetres. So you need to make sure that that is actually in pixels, otherwise you're going to have a giant canvas. So you can see here I've changed it to pixels and it's gone to the equivalent um, of what it would have been in millimetres. So you need to make sure that that is the size that you actually want it. Um, so that can trip you up a little bit if you change between menus. So once that's all done I go OK. <laughs> now I'm going to, I need to get that image in there. Harriet. Now I need to get that image in there that um, that I get got from Pixabay before. So I'm going to go File, Place. And I'm going to go Place Embedded. And that's in my Downloads folder. And it does usually restrict to the size of your canvas. So I'm just going to scale that up by clicking on the corner. But I also need to hold down my shift key because otherwise I would be able to squish that. I hope you can hear me with my crazy baby, my crazy dog barking in the background. Okay, so holding the shift key to scale that up to make sure that it fits within that. Um, square tile that I've created and then you can either click on the little tick up here to say yes like accept that scaling or you can double click just anywhere within the image. So now I have my background um, image in place I'm going to put my text over the top. So in Photoshop you want to come down to the type tool just select that and over here click and I actually already have my um, typeface selected that I use for everything. So just going to type that in. Um, and so you can change the size here or again you can grab the, um, 
the corner there and scale that up. So I usually have my words quite large. And you can come down into your layers palette over here to then select that text. Um, if you want to delete it or type it differently. Now you can see here I've just pressed enter and my type has gone over itself. So that is over here in the letting. So you've got your type size, my type size is 200. But my letting, which is the spacing between the lines, is only 52.91. So I want to put that up um, basically almost to 200 as well. I like them quite close together. So that will then space that out. Okay, so I've got my blog title. Whoops. And that error came up because I was trying to move my type there, but I don't have anything selected. So I need to select my type and then I can move it over. I'm going to go to paragraph and go right align because I want it to go down that way. Um, I'm going to make it even, whoops, bigger. Sometimes, you know, click on the wrong things occasionally. Now, um, it's not too bad, but obviously with my type going, the white type going over the light and dark background, that's a little bit hard to read. So whatever your blog title ends up being or whatever it is that you're doing, you want to make sure that it's easily readable. So try and find a spot in that tile or in that graphic where it's a, like the, the background's not too distracting. Um, so if, for example, I had this going in this sort of shape, it's still a little bit maybe hard to read the goes. So what I could do and what I often do do is just give it a little bit of a drop shadow. So you can double click on your type layer in your layers palette. Just move this out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Uh, go down to drop shadow. And at the moment I have it set on light and white because it's a glow. We don't want that. So we go uh, normal, change this to dark. Now your um, default setting will probably just be like a normal drop shadow because I've used this recently for something else. Then it, it has a different effect, um, you know, on it. So I'm going to change the size, the spread, the, and the distance. There we go. So that's probably generally what yours will kind of look like when you first go into your drop shadow settings. Um, and you can just adjust it from there, like which way you want it to go. I generally like it going that way. How dark you want it to be if you want it 100% or lower opacity. Um, generally like to have it pretty close in. Anyway, that's just all styling. That's completely up to you. Okay, so the last thing that I would want to do is um, just put my website name or my brand name on it down the bottom. So I'll come back down to my type tool, click down here, you go the makers co, and I usually have a different typeface for that one. The good thing about the newer versions of Photoshop and Illustrator is that they have the smart guide. So um, I can pop this down here and that pink line pops up when it's actually on the center line. So I don't have to You get my rulers and draw out a guide and like line it all up. It kind of just does it for me and snaps to it. So it's really helpful. So that's pretty much it. We're done. Now, um, one of the most important things is to save it correctly for the web. So you don't want this to be a massive file size. You want it to be nice and small because you're going to put it on your website and you want everything running nice and fast. So if you come up to file, export, you have a few different options. So I am kind of stuck in my old ways and I just go save the web even though it's a legacy version because that's what I know. Um, so I just go save the web because it's really super easy. Um, I make sure it's a JPEG. I usually have my quality around 60, which is the lowest I would go, but it makes it like nice and small. And you can change the image, si image size here if you need to. Um, but I, again, I like having it about 1200 because that's wide enough to put as a in the actual blog post or also to share to Instagram if you want to and across all the other social platforms. Um, and you can see here, this is what the file size is that will end up at. So 189K, under 200 is really good, under 100 is awesome, but probably under 200 is what you'd be aiming for when you have detailed background images. So then you just want to go save and give it um, the actual title. Make sure you're saving it in a folder where you know where to find it. It should be with all the resources of that particular blog post. And that's pretty much it. You're done. Press save and you have your image ready to go to put into your WordPress post. 
So that's it for today and thank you for bearing with me and my slightly noisy children <laughs> and slightly noisy dog too. And I will see you in the next one. You'll see me in the next one. Thank you. See ya. Yes, sweetheart. Can I have some more? In a minute, in a minute.